Hi guys and welcome back to our channel, Little Bit Hoopy. Great to see you again. There's been a hell of a lot going on around here lately. So uh, why don't you come for a wander and I'll show you what we've been doing. I had to show you this. So the, this is the, the first in the interim patch. But have a look. Isn't she beautiful? I never used to like radishes, but these are just, oh, they're just sensational. Um, I think these ones are the Cherry Bell variety. Actually, I tell you what, we've got the tag here. Let's have a squeeze. I'm lying. Champion. <laughs> Ella. But anyway, they're beautiful and I've got a heap of them ready to go, but uh, this one is uh, going to be going to be my snack, I think. Hmm. Yum. I wonder what the poorer people are doing. The beetroot here are uh, looking not too bad, like they've put on plenty of growth. Um, but I was hoping that they'd, they'd have the roots have developed by now, or at least starting so far nothing. The mini cauliflowers, they need a water at the moment. We've had, yesterday was really windy and today is windy on and up as well. The Brussels sprouts, look, I'm persevering with them because they are growing quite rapidly. So uh, I'm going to leave them in over here. The cauliflowers here, look how huge they've gotten. And the baby kale, like we're picking at that sort of every other night and I haven't even knocked the edge off of it yet. Um, the broad beans, I was going to pull them out, but some of them actually have what looks like could be flowers developing. So I'm gonna leave them in. And the peas, you can see the flowers on the peas there. So they are definitely staying. Now, the one amazing thing, do you remember me saying to you that I was too late on the snow peas and I'm going to rip them out? Well, the buggers have defied me. And we have flowers. So they can stay in for a little bit longer. <laughs> and we'll see if we get anything off of them. Uh, the sprouting broccoli is almost finished. Um, so I will be leaving in, look at that, to a gardener. That is one of the most beautiful sights you will ever see in your garden. <laughs> Just gorgeous. So needless to say, because of that, and there's some little native pollinators up the top here as well. So for that reason, I will be keeping a couple of these plants in and letting them go completely to seed. The lettuce. I've been picking at that and it's still just gone nuts. So we will be having more salad, I think. The carrots have really just shot up. I was a bit worried thinking, oh, they're not gonna develop, you know, first time I've ever put seed, the carrot seeds directly in the bed and oh, here we go, but they're doing really well. So I'll take that, check out the little kohlrabi. How cute is he? <laughs> So he will probably be another, probably four weeks away before I can eat him. That's fine. I can deal with that. Then over this side, do you want to see something funny? So in my lemongrass, which needs cutting back, I got, I have no idea what these are. So if anyone can tell me, they, I think they flower, but I, I don't have a clue what they are. I got them for free from uh, the Inglewood Mitre 10 nursery because they were dead. Anyway, I saw a couple of green bits left on them and thought oh, I'll just whack them in a pot. Well, the things have gone nuts. So I don't know whether they're a form of daisy or whatever they are. I don't really care. Flowers are always a bonus in my garden. So um, that's not an issue. Check out the pak choy. So we will be eating that probably as of next week. Not that one, obviously, but the rest of them. The silver beet, um, I'm still picking at that regularly. So I will leave that in for the time being. And the red onions are looking fantastic. Nice and thick. I haven't dug down to see what they look like underneath, but 
going by the tops, they look nice and healthy, so I'm not going to touch them. But all in all, around here, things are looking really lush. Check out the borage. You see the flowers in there? When they come into bloom, they're absolutely stunning and the bees will love them. <sighs> I'm really disappointed I cut the tops off of them now. <laughs> now that they've decided to put on flowers for me. Oh well, live and learn. moment I've only got one of these small compost bin things I picked it up cheap secondhand um, on good old Facebook marketplace so one thing one piece of advice I can give you always turn it over like if get your fork give it a good turnover and give it a good water if it looks dry I actually water it with a bit of sea salt and I find that it breaks down a bit quicker don't just put purely vegetable scraps in there. You'll end up with mold and all sorts of nasties and not to mention mice and all the other pests and whatever else. I put in, that's the chunky bits from the um, seed raising mix that I sift out. So put some of that in, put a brown matter in as well. So don't just put in green matter like your garden scraps, your weeds and the like. Put in some brown matter as well and give it a good stir through every now and then just to aerate it and make sure things are breaking down at relatively the same rate. getting some fruit trees in our orchard. This is pretty exciting for me because an orchard, it, it just means home. Like, <laughs> you can't beat it, I just love it. Um, so let me show you what we've planted so far. So we've got a ruby red grapefruit. I have never actually grown a grapefruit before, but I believe our climate here, uh, apart from the frost, obviously, uh, it's going to do really well. Um, obviously, come winter time, we're going to have to do a frost cover, cover on, well, just about everything. But you know what? <laughs> Doesn't matter none if we can get a few grapefruit. Over here, I've got a bizarre little 
lime tree. Let me find the tag for you. Rangpur lime. I've never heard of it, but I had to have one because, you know, it's different and, well, I didn't have one. Plus, it's meant to be great for marmalade, so bonus for that. Then over here, we've got our Japanese seedless mandarin. These are beautiful eating mandarins. They're just absolutely fantastic with a loose flesh and obviously no or very minimal seeds. Then our lemonade tree. We just picked this up from the Bridgewater Nursery. They had a big sale on on the weekend, so we had a bit of a score. Um, what else? Today, oh, how exciting is this? Today, I got a beautiful plum tree. So this was still bare rooted, but as you can see, it is starting to shoot, which is fine by me. Now, it is a black amber plum which again is a different variety for me it's so it's obviously a form of blood plum but this one is self-fertile so bonus in saying that uh, I will be getting more plum trees at some stage but for now this one here is a beautiful little nectarine tree who again is already budding and again that's fine with me because I was planting them straight away and it's an Emily Kirsten. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Emily Kirsten. There we go. So something a little bit different. I haven't grown a nectarine before. The other plants, the other trees that we planted originally are doing exceptionally well and put in on a hell of a lot of growth. Look how pretty that is. Doesn't that just make you smile? The little fig tree is doing really well and it is bursting with buds at the end there. And the little apple tree that we still don't know what it is, but you know, that doesn't matter, um, has doing really well. And you can't say it through the wire, I'm sorry, but it's put on some new growth and budding up nicely. So all in all, pretty ecstatic with the little mini orchard. I just need to put the chicken wire around these new trees which you can see we've already put the posts in just have to wrap the chicken wire around so I'll get Mark to give me a hand with that tonight and uh, yeah fingers crossed we'll get a decent haul of some fruit this year that'd be lovely into the patch now and you'll see here the berries that I planted last week are all starting to shoot. So those two are the Logan berries. And then over here, I remember this one was such a little stick and I thought, oh no, it's probably not gonna grow, but look at all the little shoots on him. So that's a boysenberry along with this one. And they're looking fantastic. The little lemon tree is loving being where it is and already you'll see it's starting to blossom bonus I've put in a few strawberries that I got from Bridgewater Nursery um, as bare rooted as well just to fill in the gaps I guess I need to get five more for there though that one there is a dwarf peach these things are brilliant um, they get to a maximum of around two meters they need to have a really good prune in I wouldn't do it the first year but I would probably do it the second year and give it a tip prune keep them in a nice shape. Now if there's one piece of advice I can give you for any bare rooted and any grafted varieties, if you see any growth, any leaves whatsoever on these bottom bits here, rip them off. Actually twist them and rip them off in a downward motion. Do not cut them off cleanly, they will grow back. That is the rootstock taking over and you will not get any fruit from the top section here you will get whatever that is that's that's down the bottom there and you don't want it simple as that so one piece of advice any growth from down here twist and rip do not cut cleanly or it will grow back the little fajoa is thriving he's looking amazing i'm really 
really thrilled with that. If you've ever eaten a fajella or a pineapple guava, they are a bit bizarre. They're very much an acquired taste, I guess, but I love them. I could not get enough of them. A friend of mine bought them into the nursery I was working at at the time, and I didn't even know what they were. <laughs> Most bizarre little fruits, but absolutely fantastic. And then over here, the pomegranate, as you can see, he's thriving there as well. So as much as our soil, look, this is our base soil here. As much as our base soil, it is true clay, true clay, but it must be really nutrient dense because absolutely everything we have put in here is thriving. We're just giving it a bit of a help along with the mushroom compost and all the good stuff to put on top. I apologize for the wind. It's actually on and off blowing a gale around here at the moment. Then we come to this end of the patch and look at our beautiful little spud. But wait, he's got a buddy. How exciting. So again, that's the blue, royal blue, blue royal. So I think that's gonna be a, a good producer, that one. Nothing from the supermarket spuds. Nothing from the Royal Ruby as yet. I'm oh, sorry for my shadow in that. But if we go over this side, we have our first Sebago. I'm a bit thrilled because, uh, oh, wait, 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 look. There's another one. Oh, how wonderful. So we decided to put two beds of Sebago potatoes in, um, purely and simply, they're a really versatile spud. You can boil them, roast them, mash them, you know, they're pretty spectacular. But uh, no movement from the second bed yet. In saying that, the second bed, I did a deeper mulch. So it might take a while for them to pop through. Garlic, <laughs> to say it's gone nuts is an understatement. <laughs> so looking amazing. And the onions. So some of these shallots that I got from Garden Express are coming up and looking really, really good. We've got our first echelon, French echelon coming through. Oh, second. And the potato onions or clumping onions, every single one of them, every one of them. So the idea will be, obviously, if these produce well, we'll be keeping some ready for planting for next year. Little rhubarb has probably tripled in size since the last video. <laughs> then we'll move over here. I think I may have saved a majority of the pak choy. So remember they were under attack. I've been spraying them with a pyrethrum spray and I seem to have saved them and one lonely fennel. <laughs> Poor thing. The kohlrabi is all doing well. Again, I'd like that to go to get a bit higher before I put a deep mulch on there. And the sugar beets. All doing really well. We do have one that's not looking 100% there. Other than that, not too worried to be honest. This little rhubarb over here, again, is probably tripled in size. And nothing as yet from the potatoes, the um, Kifla potatoes. But I don't think that they'll be too far away. Oh, actually, look at that. Brilliant. So I'll just leave that covered over with mulch. The Swedes, yeah. Yeah, a couple are doing well, others not so well. I know if you look at this soil, you're thinking, oh, your soil's so dry, it looks awful, you know, rah, rah. No, it's, it's actually not. <laughs> this soil is, uh, it's a sandy, loamy kind of soil. And if you dig underneath, you will see, it's actually quite damp under there. But it does put on this like hard surface. But I've found it to be a great growing medium. Uh, being that it's got nothing in it, I add our own horse manure, 
blood and bone and mushroom compost and just find that it it just grows everything i've actually started using it as my seed raising mix as well um so let's go into the hot house now and find out how that's going before we go into the hot house i forgot to show you so remember we had a couple of australian native flowering bushes planted either side of the gate well again bridgewater nursery thank you very much we have filled both sides with all sorts of different Australian native flowering bushes and shrubs. These all get to a maximum of two meters. In saying that, we'll probably keep them to only oh, 1.2 to 1.5 meters, um, just so it doesn't block out the sun um, come summer. Yeah, come summertime, you know, for the vegetable patch. But the idea is it's going to bring in the bees, and of course, it's going to look super pretty. Oh, look, the little butterfly bush is starting to flower. How pretty is that? <laughs> okay, let's go into the hot house and see what's been happening there. Just let me adjust while my glasses fog up. Whew, warm in here today. So, um, I don't think I've planted any new seeds as yet, but I've got one sugar snap pea has emerged. And it does look like there's movement underneath the soil. So fingers crossed they might come up soon. Oh, I better plant that kohlrabi. That needs to go in. Nothing from these beans as yet, but the Mendoza, you can just see some of the soil is disturbed there. So that won't be long. Nothing from the ashwagandha. Oh. I think I'm just about giving up on that, but my one lonely little soapport is looking fantastic. I haven't had any others emerge from that. Um, pickling cucumber and the other beans, nothing from them yet, but I only planted them a few days ago, really, so I'm not too worried. The thyme is slowly coming on nicely, so I will, once they're up further, I'll divide them. More kohlrabi, doing really well, another probably week and they'll be in. The rapini, they're slowly, one side is slowly catching up to the other. So this side I have to be, I have to plant them out. Um, the cosmos and violas all looking amazing and we'll probably need dividing out soon. Those cosmos can probably even go in to the medicinal herb garden pretty soon. No movement from the mullen. Radishes need to go in. <laughs> Celery all looking fantastic. Calendula, I'm really disappointed. I've only got what three, five seedlings that have popped up there. Uh, I think I think I might have planted them too deep, unfortunately. But oh well, you live and learn. Now a bit of excitement for me anyway. Herb Robert, my first little seedling has popped up there. I'm thrilled with that. Uh, I really thought I'd killed it off. I think I've killed the stevia off. Um, the sorrel is looking amazing. Now, I have in the comfrey roots, remember the comfrey roots I got from eBay? I don't know whether that is a bit of comfrey coming up or whether it's a weed. Time will tell. Feverfew looking fantastic. Look at the size of that one. Ah, oh, glorious. Um, notice how they're a little bit yellow, some of them. I'm wondering, because this is the um, soil that I was telling you about that we used on the veggie patches. So I'm hoping it'll work, but yeah, these guys are going to need a feed, so obviously they're lacking something. Nothing from the lemon balm yet. Again, that can take a little while to come up, so I'm not too worried. Avocados standing in the corner, looking beautiful. Then the chilies. Now remember, I only planted these not long ago, um, so they probably won't be ready. But sweet corn, look at them all. So this is the golden bantam. So a new variety for me. But uh, every single seed, or oh, there's one. So, oh no, he's coming. Um, every seed's come up, so that's a bit thrilling. Uh, nothing really from these guys yet, but I didn't expect 
any of the tomatoes to be up just yet. Uh, more chilies down there. That's the mustard greens. Uh, no movement from this lot either just yet. That's fine. That's more tomatoes and chilies and capsicums. Then over to this side, check out the foxglove. It's gone nuts. Gonna have to plant some of that out, I think. The beautiful little blueberries, I think they're gonna have to be planted out soon. As soon as I know there's not gonna be any severe frost, I'll plant them out. The plantain has sprouted one so far. Um, hopefully a few more will come up, that'd be nice. The yarrow are doing really well. And my little lemon scented gum, he's coming along. And the peppermint, peppermint's doing really well too. So won't be long and we'll be um, planting out them. All in all, everything is doing pretty well. I am a bit concerned with the soil that I used from our pile not being good enough for seed raising mix. So time will tell there. Uh, I will keep you posted on that one. Well, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's just starting to come over a little bit gray now and I'm just starting to feel a few drops. So I think now's a really good time to go in for a cup of tea. <laughs> so remember guys, live life to the fullest, love beyond words and laugh like no one can hear you. I'll see you next time. Bye.